Hello, I'm Jana Ugrachelidze and I'm the director of the film Instruction for Survival. Стараешься, знаешь, как вот тихо, мирно, спокойно. Хотя каждый день приходишь и знаешь, что на бочке бомбы сидишь. Вот-вот она может подорваться. Тут говорят, что вот таких людей надо на остров и затопить там, или сжечь, или пристрелить. Какого хрена просто возьмешь и скажешь, что здравствуйте, вот меня, я туда. Меня тоже на островок. Не рискнешь. Идти на работу, потом с нее обратно, по улице, в напряжении. Это каждый день, Божий день. Потом ты заходишь в свой мир спокойный, где ты знаешь, что ты — это ты. Напряжение не снимается. У тебя на следующее утро надо готовиться. Hi and welcome to the 35th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wutig, and today I'm here with director Jana Ugrichelitze to talk about her film Instructions for Survival. Hi, Jana. How are you doing? How I, uh, it's, everything is okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, thank you so much for your film. Um, I found it was a very, very powerful film that is extremely competent in, in showing the force that people have to live under just to be who they are and, and the, the, the pain and suffering caused by by mindless intolerance um, and it, it basically it follows um, this couple and it begins with um, video material of uh, public violence against the queer community in Georgia. Um, could you maybe tell us in your own word a little bit what the situation is for the queer community in Georgia? Um, the queer community in uh, Georgia this um, is quite a big queer community in Georgia the fate uh, each of them depends from like everywhere from the life quality from financial status or from luck I have a lot of uh, queer friends in Georgia I would specify in Tbilisi in the capital successful gay photographs, photographers and directors and DJs, the owners of nightclubs, uh, the owners of cafes. There is a big sector that welcomes as well the queer community. So they had luck to be born in Tbilisi, most of them in the downtown. They had luck to have open-minded parents and relatives that welcomed them, not willing to kill them immediately after coming out but support them. They had luck to have a strong, supportive network of friends. They had possibility, due to the fact being born in Tbilisi, get a good education, they lived by their parents, or they get um, financial support from the parents to afford an apartment and concentrate on having an education. As a result, a normal job, learning foreign languages. So all these pillars, stations serve for a steady ground one can stand on. It's not even about money. All my generation, the children of 90s were financially limited, uh, only about support and acceptance. If one of these pillars is not there, you merely don't have it. If some squad of the chain is missing all these construction wrecks. Mm. So to be queer in a big city is something absolutely different from being queer in a small town or a small village. If you're a transgender in a small Georgian village, 
you just don't have a chance to be yourself. After outing, in worst case, you will be killed immediately by your own relatives or neighbors or friends that feel themselves betrayed. In the best case, no one kills you, but your whole life, including the life of the whole family, turns into a nightmare. Doing nothing means to deny your own identity, to lie yourself and everyone around and uh, just to play a role. Outing means to put yourself and your family in a danger and to bring shame on them. And that's something one cannot deal in Georgia with. Um, what say the neighbors? That's mm. the biggest fear. So all queer people, they just free their parents and their families from themselves. Mm -hmm. And they leave their home and move to a big city with the hope to start a new life, an honest one where they can be what they are, wear what they want and look how they want. And what happens in a big city, 100% of all trans women after moving to a big city, sink into prostitution immediately. All of them without exclusion because they literally were not so lucky to have support by their parents. Yeah. Get an education or gain some skills. They don't have uh, good connections. They don't have a good uh, supportive network of friends. They cannot be a photographer or a designer illustrator to sit in front of computer in a cool modern clothes and after work drink a cocktail in a pre club bar that belongs to one of the friends and then go with a taxi in a nightclub to dance because you are in the guest list and mm. you get inside without problems no matter yeah, yeah. what you wear. So they're excluded from the queer Georgian community as well. So there are like two worlds of queer community in Georgia that can barely cross with each other. So parallel they are. And there is no, no, no chance to be crossed because even the everyday issues in these worlds, they differ from each other. There are different problems that have to be solved on each of the level. I guess it's not, it's not only about queer community in Georgia. I think that's everywhere. That's mm -hmm. the result of capitalism. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think that uh, the, the way your film portrays family, in a sense, really brings that along. Because um, I feel that, that specifically in films that are not very concerned with, with the trans community, you, you sometimes have that tendency to portray uh, trans characters as maybe either loners or very promiscuous party people. But in this case, it is very grounded in that sense of family, in that sense that uh, Alexander and Marie have each other, and they also have support from their immediately their immediate family. Um, I think kind of my first question on this would be how how did you get to meet Alexander and Marie? Was that uh, a coincidence or? Um, yeah. So I. No, that wasn't a <laughs> coincidence. Um, I know um, Sasha before he started hormone therapy. Mm -hmm. Later, I've got acquainted uh, with Mary. So it's uh, quite a long time that we know each other. And this fact helped a lot, of course. It uh, was uh, one of the reasons why the film became possible mm -hmm. because uh, We mutually trusted each other. They trusted me and I trusted them. So we were sure from both of the sides that we are doing something good and that uh, this has to happen. In the very beginning, it started uh, very harmless and we were making jokes and had a very nice time, <laughs> but... Um, Then, day after day, in the process of filming, 
the situation changed completely. The whole tension got so big. First, this expectation of birth and coming farewell uh, with the baby, then the expectation of leaving the country, crossing the border at the Czech control in the airport, first in Georgia, then in Belgium, because that's not a normal everyday fact of life that a transgender from Georgia wants to travel as a tourist in yeah. Europe. Normally, everyone knows what is the last destination of a transgender people from East Europe or some other uh, third countries like Georgia, and that is a refugee camp. Mm -hmm. So there was a chance that we could be just turned around. And yeah. from all this tension, no one of us could sleep in the end. Everyone was uh, strained like uh, strings that could split every second and um, there was very often the moments when i thought that someone of us just loses his mind yeah. or gets crazy or has just a heart attack yeah that was absolutely unbearable no one thought about film anymore there was just a small moment when the thoughts about the film were relevant, when I applied for the fundings by Robert Bosch Stipendium and um, Film Median Stiftung to get some money for being <laughs> free to move back and forth from Germany yeah. to Georgia and back, then to Belgium and back. But the rest of the way, no one thought about film. We transformed in one knot, in one bunch of nerves, and yeah. everything that we were doing was only instinctively. So the fact knowing each other was very good, that helped us a lot. Yeah. Together in one bunch, rolled us somehow to Belgium, to the gates of La Petit Chateau, refugee mm. camp in Brussels. No one realized how we made it. <laughs> Only in several months when the guys got finally the refugee status and they were allowed, allowed to stay in Belgium, we all exhaled. Okay. <laughs> all. I, can, I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good that we have the film now in the end, just to have a look back, because no one remembered the details anymore, as if all of us were in Kamatos. As mm. if it happened to someone else, not with us, not with guys, you know. Mm. Would you would you say that uh, the the move to Belgium in the end was sort of um, 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 gave gave Sasha and Mari complete freedom, or was it in a way also a sort of uh, you know having to move to a different country than your home can also be a little bit putting you sort of out of place. But for them, was it a complete positive experience? Um, that's everything in the process. I can't mm. answer this question. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I find that that um, I, I personally grew to like Sasha and Mari a lot because it is immediately clear how how strong and and I don't know, like deeply they have this deep dignity you can see that in in scenes when i i like the scene where sasha talks to a drunk man at the station and he he's kind of bothered but he also says hey leave him alone like he's he's trying to earn a living same as everyone you know he's he has a dignity about him even though he has to live every day sort of as a lie on the outside and the same with mari the same the, the, the way she never qu questioned her love for Sasha, even though there, there, there was this big mystery that was, was once cleared up at, at one point. Um, what was it like to, to have those scenes on the outside, knowing what you know about Sasha and Mari and knowing about the public that it could, could possibly turn violent in a way, or that, that you had the feeling that um, there was some truth that only you and Sasha and Mari knew and that you could not show. Yeah, this de danger, dangerous streets. Mm. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure that um, that was disturbing. 
Mm. First of all, for the couple that all their life was uh, trying to move like shadows, trying not to draw any attention. And that was a real challenge. A new state, walking in the street and being filmed with all uh, our equipment. There was just two of us, uh, cinematographer, Jule Kramer and me. I was making the sound with, with, with this terrible monster microphone <laughs> but still that draw the attention a lot the camera this microphone and every glance and every question of some pedestrian that felt themselves uh, that the, they they thought that they should ask anything mm. brought the pair and us as well just in a panic yeah. so it was like walking on a thin ice that could every second crash under your feet. So we filmed just once Sasha in the street and once them both uh, in the street. And then we had to refuse from filming outside. Mm -hmm. That took so much uh, power and so much energy that was like every time go out in the war. Mm -hmm. That is the reason as well why the most of the scenes were filmed inside, like in a shell. But there was so much love and warmth inside that luckily all scenes were not suffocating on the opposite. Suffocating for us was outside, so such a paradox. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I think that that also kind of shows that you had a re really like a strong bond that that kept you all together in this. Yeah. Um, there's also this aspect that um, that uh, Mari has this surrogate m motherhood, um, and 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 she's expecting that child. Um, was that something that developed um, that was clear at the beginning of filming, or was that something that developed during filming that that was a new development? Um, I didn't understand the question. Um, um, when you when you met Sasha and Mari, was was yeah. it already clear that um, she would be a surrogate mother, or was that something that yeah. happened? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that was yeah that that also made a very strong point about about yeah. family. Mikhotiro, <laughs> Tauts <laughs> I 
مگرام میم تو تاس ایشاتی پدی نیه روی قهوهی میترو میز شو زلی دارود که ایس روک ارگا تاری داوم شویدی دی او که ارا پرس اگر کاد نمیشو با اگر نیرد کیو سخر ارا پرس Point I didn't expect that mm. we portrayed this as well, this portrayal of the family mm -hmm. that is not defined by the blood. Sasha and Mary, of course, they always uh, planned in their dreams to have a family, to have children. And um, this state of being a full family was brought very close to them in the period of surrogacy, mm -hmm. the moment when Mary had a child in her belly. She never had children before surrogacy. That was her first pregnancy and her first child. And um, yeah, and fortunately, this uh, multi-layered portrayal of the family was shadowed all the time by impossibility to be real and to be true that was kind of sweet unreachable illusion such a fairy tale but all emotions and love and mary's sense of motherhood mm -hmm. during the whole period of surrogacy and after birth as well was real that was pure happiness absolute unconditional not defined by blood and this child will stay her first child forever no matter how many own children she brings to the world this girl will be always the first mm. her motherhood has begun with the appearance of this girl so in this moment one sees that motherhood is something absolutely unconditional that is not defined by the blood not at all and uh, my thoughts were how crazy is our world so egocentric maybe even one cannot have the children in natural way they want without a doubt biologically own child yeah as if only your biologically child can awaken motherhood and f fatherhood in a person. There are so many orphanages where, where, where the children are waiting to be adopted, yeah. be loved. They have very little chances. Yeah. When in the, in the end or in truth, it is a matter of love and care and not a matter of whose blood you own, what yeah. blood runs through your veins. That is true. Um, this next bit is a bit of a personal question you obviously do not have to answer if you don't want to. I would just ask, um, are you in contact with Sasha and Mari right now? Yeah, yeah, sure, hmm. sure. Okay. We are in contact. Well, yeah. <laughs> well I, I just mean to say I, I hope they are doing well and um, I hope everything um, goes according to a plan and I hope they're happy in in uh, the place that they are now yeah the you know this um, the moment when mary felt um the first movements in her belly and the moment sasha felt the first movements in the belly of his beloved woman they both understood that uh, they are trapped mm. but it was too late that's um, that's a hard challenge as well to look on the people to follow the people that are just trapped and have no possibility to change anything to see them in a point of no return and the only thing uh, sasha and mary could do was just to rush on the full speed without looking back knowing that you break onto pieces in the end mm. and then they crashed on the whole speed and now they 
stood up and they tried to continue to live, try to recover. That is what they are doing now, licking the wounds and mm. trying to learn how to walk, how to breathe. And um, yeah, that's what they are now doing. Yeah. In, in, And I, I hope they they have all the strength that they need for this for this pretty big task that that kind of lays ahead and that yeah. that will help them recover. And I very much hope that maybe if uh, the powers that be decide that it will be the case, maybe we can we can see them um, uh, at the second part of the Berlinale or at least well. Um, I would I would be very much looking forward to to see you as well um, when we all get back together in the summer. Normal life, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> normal life, as normal as it can be, at least. All right, I think that's it for me. Uh, thank you so much for for taking the time, and um, thank you so much for making the film. Um, it has had a, a big impact, and um, it it. It gave you that feeling that is a very heartfelt project, and there is a lot of emotional power that I that I personally felt. Thank you so much. Thank you.